May 40 here, top of Runyon Canyon, looking out there towards, see that's Westwood or Century City, downtown, in the Griffith Observatory. It's about uh, 3 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon, March 26, from up where we belong. And uh, just talking to a mate of mine, and he's a secular Jew, but he's doing such a kiddish Hashem on Tinder. Like, just truly righteous man. He's not revealing his religion, but when he's getting inappropriately propositioned by women, he's uh, turning them down. Like, there's this 38 year old woman who came over, and she told him that he could be the fourth man, that she was you know, regularly hooking up with three other dudes. She was kind of homeless, sleeping on people's couches. And he just wasn't interested. And uh, another woman sent him like inappropriate videos of herself with another guy. And again, he just tuned right out. So he's just being a match on Tinder. And uh, so he's giving, giving men a good name, giving Jews a good name, like you can go to a place where no one's made a bracha, and you can make a bracha. And what, a, what an elevation that is. So normally you think, ah, what's, what's a Jew doing on a Goetia place like Tinder? But such is the holiness of a Jew, that they can go to a place like Tinder they can make a bracha. They can conduct themselves like a mensch. Right? They can they can elevate the holy sparks. So it's very easy to degrade and drop down to the lowest level when you leave the kihila, when you leave the community. Right? And it's just you and the app. But uh, one of the signs of recovery, I think, is to be as transparent as possible. So if you're working from home, right, you conduct yourself as though your boss was watching your every move. Right? So that there's nothing that you're ashamed of. I think, in general, the more transparent your life, the better. Like adopting the attitude of everybody knows everything. It's really holy transparent uh, recovery way to live your life so it takes less, less energy because you're not worried about hiding stuff you're not ashamed you're reducing double life so you know, a lot of people work from home and they may only put in like four hours of work and then when they're off work they don't feel good so then they're kind of dreading going back to work because they know when they get back to work they won't really be doing much working so then you don't get to enjoy your downtime but you put in an honest day's work right and when you're off the clock it's a lot easier to enjoy the downtime like you feel good about yourself you feel strong and then you take that in to your weekend, to your off hours, to every activity you do, because you know you've been fair dinkum. Right? When you're fair dinkum, when you're authentic, when you're giving a fair go to your boss, to your clients, like everyone's got a boss. If you don't work for someone, then your clients are your boss, customers are your boss. So, Give your clients, your boss, your employer, your customers a fair go, then makes you feel strong. And you can take that strength into your off hours. And then strength you build up during your off hours, right? You then take that back in a virtuous circle into your work hours. So I'm all about building the virtuous 
circle. So getting up early, taking the cold shower, having my protein drink and my supplements, my prayer meditation, 12 set meetings. And I get good inspiring stuff inside me early on in the day. And you just build that virtuous circle. Right? You put in fair days, work, you put in fair dinkum effort. Even if you're working from home. And then when you go on Tinder, you can be fair dinkum on Tinder too. Right? So it's not like Tinder then becomes a dispiriting experience. Right? Take that strength, a positive charge, keep refilling it in each aspect of your life. So I was listening to Dr. Donna Lee Snipes and uh, she had this like 12 point program for grounding yourself in reality. And one point of her program was that you write about your urges. So I thought, oh, that's cool. You know how long it's been since I've written about my urges? You don't accept your, your urges as determinative. They're not the last word. They're just they're things that blow through you like the breeze. So I asked my friend if he never journaled about his urges. And apparently he never journaled. He was a big believer in repression. So apparently one of the reasons a lot of people have trouble sleeping is they have a busy day and the first time they're not busy then they lay their head down then they have to do all their thinking and all the thoughts and worries and cares and concerns right, rush over them. Bloody hell. 